my YouTube video today. Okay, you guys, so here we are. We're actually going to be talking about my TBR, what I read, probably didn't read, and so forth, during the reading rush this year for the 2020. Now, I know I should have did this video a few weeks back, but... Uh, there was a lot of things that I was just trying to kind of settle within myself and I was also waiting for a particular item to do this video. Um, I am going to do it at the very end, but just to let you guys know, the reading rush this year was just... It, it, it was a lot of questionable things that happened. Some of them can be slightly excused as in the fact that they are from a different country than the United States. So things that we celebrate here may be very different than what they celebrate over there. And there was other, you know, things that still came up that I'm just kind of like, ooh, you know? There is one particular thing that I do want to talk about at the end. So this year, um, the Reading Rush did choose a book that they wanted to kind of add as a little like extra book to read during the Reading Rush and they were going to discuss it in a live so people can basically participate in it. It was kind of like having like a little book club but it was just like this one individual book. So I'm going to talk about that around the end and give you guys a little bit more info as to what happened during the live. But either way, you guys, I really hope they they kind of hear the feedback from everybody and really take it to account and take this a little bit more serious and yeah hopefully they can take that into next year and show the improvements because that's the thing with me it's like you can make so many apologies for certain things but if we do not see an improvement then i think it's going to be very difficult to actually regain audience and basically have this kind of like worldwide event where everyone can kind of come together with the love of books so i don't know i'm i'm kind of saddened that things just kind of took a little bit of a twist with this whole reading rush and i really 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 hope for the better for 2021 so i hope that they kind of just take all that feedback and information and really show us that they've improved for the next year for people to actually want to participate next year so i am going to put a little timestamp down below it'll have like when i actually start talking about the actual live that the reading rush actually did so yeah so i'm gonna have that at the end and how about we just get started so my nook is already running out of juice out of battery so i'm going to just open this up really quickly okay yeah so i do have it here i brightened up the screen because i know it was a little bit dull um, a little bit earlier when i tried to show it this is the actual ebook and this is about Ed Gein, you guys. So it is Deviant, um, the shocking true story of Ed Gein, the original psycho by Harold Shetster. Shet I'm not good with last names, you guys, with author names. And you guys know here in my channel, um, I struggle a lot. But that's why I show you guys like the book. And that way you guys can read it yourselves. But yeah, so I did end up reading this. This actual book, let's just say if you love documentaries of true crime or anything like that, this definitely had more of that kind of aspect. And instead of actually watching the film, you're actually reading it. That's kind of what I got from this, which actually to me was pretty enjoyable in regards to like the smoothness of it and how it transitioned through a lot of the things in his life. I feel like it was very, very interesting. Now this one will talk about Ed Gein and how he kind of started his life and how his mom was very, very possessive, but she really believed that women were like the devil and they were just all but sin. I guess you could say the mom really played a lot into the way that he grew up. His father was also kind of abusive, so that didn't help the situation at all. But then he just started kind of getting interested in different things you know for those who don't know I don't because this is the part where I guess it starts to get a little bit graphic if you don't know um okay if you guys have ever read or watched the movie um Psycho or um Silence of Lambs or The Chainsaw Massacre those are all actually inspired by Ed Gein, you guys. So if you guys didn't know, especially like in Chainsaw Massacre, he had like a mask, but it was like a face of a human. Uh, this is what Ed Gein would do. So he would actually get the flesh from the body and he would make things, um, including even the skull. He actually had made a bowl out of a skull, lampshades and um, stockings and it gets very gross. It was very gross. It was very horrific stuff, you guys. And I don't want to go further than that. Um, I think if you are not a really true crime person, this may not be the book for you. I mean, it gets pretty graphic. And ugh, I just, uh, that's the only thing. It just kind of puts a little sickness in my tummy, if you know what I mean. 
but did I actually find it enjoyable as in regards to the author really um, depicted and kind of like really gave you this image of who Ed Gein was. I think he did a really great job in this book. So just to let you guys know. Now, true crime has been something that I have been wanting to get into. This is why I chose this one for the Reading Rush Challenge number, I think it was six, which was read a book in a genre that you have been thinking or wanting to read. True crime is something that I actually am now starting to want to get into. It's a little rough. I think you have to really have a strong stomach for especially these at least this particular true crime like serial killers and stuff like that it's it's a bit to stomach okay i'm just letting you guys know but yeah i mean i really don't have anything negative to say about this i mean it did talk even about the courts and all of that as well as like how they were diagnosing him and all these things and just how no one really expected him to do this now he did live in plainfield wisconsin yeah you guys so that is a book that i actually read do i recommend i think if you're a really big true crime person then Lee, yes i would recommend that book but i'm gonna go on ahead and go to the next book because I'm actually taking a bit long. All right, guys. So the next book is actually something called The Shack. And this is by W.M. Paul Young. Now, this particular author has a story of his own. And he actually did this book to kind of help with his, I guess you could say healing. And he decided to make a story about something that kind of really resembles a lot of like finding your spirituality and stuff like that so if you're into stuff like that then this would be something you would probably actually like this was heart-wrenching it was at times I mean I cried okay I cried and especially there was a moment of a point where he had to really learn about forgiveness now before I go on to explain to you guys about this book really quickly like I did with the Ed Gein one this one actually did cover three of the challenges now one of them I didn't fully do all the way and I'm truly sorry about that but it's kind of hard times right now to be doing it and that is reading this book completely outside I know a lot of people found that difficult that was another thing people really criticized them for it because some people just cannot be outdoors because of the pandemic going on this is also a book that also meets another challenge that I did have which was actually to get a book that you saw the movie first and this one I did see the movie first and you guys the movie also had me bawling my eyes out okay it is very very emotional yeah this was good and another thing that the challenge also said choose a book that you first touch so I did get all of the books that I wanted to read and I just kind of pulled one out really quickly and that was this one so yeah those are the challenges that I actually got for this now yeah so I only read portion of this outside on my deck and then I came back inside and kind of finished it off because I really was like getting into it and I didn't want to stop reading it so the next day I could have gone outside and like finished reading it but I was just so engulfed in this book like I was intrigued it's such an easy read very smooth transitions from everything from the beginning to what had happened all the way to the very end you guys and like I said there was just parts of it that I was just kind of like ugh, gut wrench and it's weird because actually in the movie I cried about a particular scene where he kind of had a little bit of closure but in the book I cried in regards for him accepting kind of the idea of forgiveness and it was a completely different spot and that just comes to show you that like the book and the movie will all give you different kinds of feels and there's going to be different parts of it that might kind of resonate with you or really pull on your like emotional strings but this does follow a guy who has a wife and kids and he did end up going on a camping trip with his family without his wife because his wife had to kind of stay back so he ended up going camping and on the very last day in which they were going to leave something tragic really happened their two kids ended up getting into an incident in the lake and he went to the rescue but at the same time he ended up losing his daughter his very 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 young daughter and that was very gut-wrenching um it all showed about how he was so involved in the process of finding his daughter with the deputies and the officers and news stations and everything just how involved he was to find his daughter and sadly he didn't find his daughter and they never found her body on the location of where possibly the murder happened and 
that's where everything kind of changed within him. He kind of lost a lot of faith in regards to his spirituality. He just became a very completely different person, very standoffish. I think a lot of the times he also kind of blamed himself for everything. It was a definitely a rough road until he actually, in one of the big winter storms, received an actual letter from someone called Papa. Now, Papa in his family is very well known for God. For them, God was Papa, and that's how they would call them. That's how he, they would reference him. And for some reason, this letter pretty much says, I'll be waiting for you at the shack, which was the location where they found some clothing and like blood stains and stuff where they think that the murder happened of his daughter. That was very, very rough for him. And I think he was going back and forth and finally he came to the conclusion he needs to go to the shack. And he didn't know why, but he just felt this pooling to go there. Now, when he reaches there, he of course sees like the really bad, disheveled kind of home but he ends up kind of leaving, like wanting to leave back and then things kind of changed. It was like this home took a whole other view. And that's all I'm gonna say because I don't wanna say way too much, but there is a journey that he does go to in regards to whether he meets Papa and who really is Papa. Yeah, so that is actually the journey of this one. I found it very wholesome. It even had me questioning a lot of things in my life and how I also struggle a little bit with my spirituality. And for some reason, something as hard as this story is, it just really, really resonated with me. And I really recommend it for anybody who is also possibly struggling with spirituality too. Like, I think this is a book that you guys, I don't know, you guys would love. Now, if for whatever reason, you guys can't read the book, you guys can't get to the audiobook, whatever, and you guys just want to go to the easy peasy thing, then watch this. I think this was on Hulu. I don't know if it's still in there. I'm not too sure, but I know you can get the movie. I personally have the movie myself. I ended up getting it on sale when they had this whole Black Friday sale and I saw it. I was like, oh my gosh, I remember that, you know, watching that particular movie. And I do have to say, you guys, the movie and the actual book, they're pretty dead on. Usually there is times where they'll switch a lot of the book content and then just kind of give it a different form on the movie to kind of either make sense or to kind of like pick up the viewer's interest. But when it comes to this, it was pretty, pretty dead on. Like it almost felt like I, when I, as I was reading this, it almost felt like I was watching that movie replaying in my head, almost everything, if not everything. Like to me, it felt like everything described was like exactly like the movie. So if you watch the movie, it's exactly like the book. If I can, I don't know, there probably will be maybe one or two things that were kind of different that I probably didn't catch, but they were like pretty much the same thing, you guys. Okay, so that is that book right there. Now the next book did actually let me finish a few more challenges as well. And for this one, the challenge was um, to get a book that had the birthstone of your actual color. Uh, which mine is emerald which this one has a little bit of emerald in there also a book that had the the and actually started with the so that also kind of you know added to that challenge and then also that it was set on a completely different country than yours this one is actually set in paris france and yeah so that's pretty much this one it is called the gilded wolves right here you guys and I don't mean to butcher the name of the actual author but her name is roshani chaksky I, I really hope I'm not ruining the name, but you guys, yes, this book, oh my gosh. Okay, so the thing with this book, I did get it in the Owl Crate subscription box, but I finally picked it up and read it for these particular challenges that I did get. And yeah, so I ended up reading it and I'm actually glad I did. Now, this storyline is supposed to be a trilogy. So this is the first book in that set. And I think the second book is already out, if I'm not mistaken, you guys. But yeah, so this one actually is kind of a complex story. I think if you like something that is very complex, but yet historical, but yet a little bit of fantasy in it, you guys would definitely enjoy something like this. I personally didn't actually feel that the book fully picked up until about the halfway mark was when it started to get extremely juicy. Now, I do feel that the other half of it was a lot about getting to know each of the characters that were involved. You do have this book that is kind of like a, uh, how would I say? Okay, it's a very advanced version of what would be Harry Potter, but I don't wanna say it's anywhere near Harry Potter. That's the thing. There's just a couple similarities that I am going to talk about 
with Harry Potter and you guys will probably get my drift there but it is a completely different like zone I mean they don't have wands or anything like that but they do have a lot of like magical aspects to this book and to them now this book is supposedly supposed to be set back in the 18 hundreds which is like 1889 and they do ride carriages and all this stuff but for some reason there's a lot of magic here and I'm talking about advanced magic so in other words there is a lot of like you can change a certain outfit into something else they can also morph and kind of like give themselves a different image so kind of like you know in Harry Potter when you drink the polyjuice and you turn into a completely different person but that polyjuice takes almost like a whole month just to make no not here mm -mm. all you do is just have this little dust or something and and you have to touch the individual and boom you become that person um it's just not that complex <laughs> so in here you do have a lot of that you do have a lot of people kind of changing or shifting into a different completely different person and it definitely brings a lot of interest to this so we do have basically kind of houses okay which again I know I, I'm gonna keep saying this you guys but this is the only way I can really describe to you guys especially if you guys have read Harry Potter before so you do have four houses and you guys know Harry Potter they had four houses Ravenclaw Hufflepuff Slytherin and Gryffindor well in here you have different houses so you have the house of Nyx the house of Kor the house of what is it Vamp and then the fallen house which is a house that no longer is available and is supposed to be completely gone capiche kaboof gone so out of these four homes one of them is like gone the other one kind of lost all of the ancestors and then eventually ended up kind of fading away and just closing it off which is the house of vamp and that is actually where the main character Siverin, which i hope i'm saying his name right but Siverin is kind of the main character here and he was pretty much the next in line to pretty much get the house of vamp but it, that was taken away from him and he was very very bitter about it so Siverin has to pretty much go through a slew of things to try to find the answer of why he wasn't given that reign and how bad he really really wanted it back it doesn't matter if you're a woman or a man um, whoever is next in line is next in line and that's just it so it could be a patriarch it could be a matriarch now actually Siverin owns a hotel where a lot of like really fancy people come and yeah so it's very very well known and I am gonna come back to him since he's the main character there is a group that he actually works with um, but that's gonna be for later so then of course you have the house of core now this book actually does start with the house of core and in this one the ring was stolen which is everyone kind of gets this ring embedded into their finger and kind of like engraved into their finger something like that only the matriarchs or the patriarchs can have it pretty much that is stolen at the very very beginning of the book and then we have the house of nyx which we do have hypnos and i think it's a really kind of interesting name to give him um but he, it is hypnos and all of these people that are involved in this story by the way are all around kind of the 19th 20 year old kind of range if that's going to give you guys any kind of idea of this like I said so you have those four homes and each one has a representation a different symbol to each one of them so for the house of fallen for example you do have the star for the house of Banff you had a snake biting its tail and for the house of core you had thorns kind of twisted into place and then you had for the house of Nyx um, some crescent moons so in this story you do have Severin who has a group of kind of misfits on Almost. so you do have Tristan which is like his brother to him they're not blood brothers but they grew up together and they became really really embedded into their brotherhood just know that they are brothers and he also Tristan is a very like well-known gardener so anything about gardens where they're there for good or bad like he does it like he's really great at that he's really great at potions and things like that so that is his little thing then we have Enrique Enrique is another individual he's actually a historian he knows a lot about history and everything then you also have Layla and Layla is kind of like a baker she at least that's what she is there in the actual hotel what she does is doing a baker but then she's also this like dance Dancer, this very mysterious dancer that always has a mask on and she kind of has this like secret identity uh, but yeah so everyone loves her for dancing but nobody knows that it's really just Layla now of course for the next person in this whole group is Zofia now Zofia is very very different I kind of loved her way of being she was kind of like that like bad like tough rugged girl and I just I don't know something about that I loved it you know 
but she is actually like a math like really good mathematician like she just loves math either way she's not just that she's also the engineer so she also makes really awesome weapons for this group so either way they ended up going and pretty much doing a little heist and they wanted to steal a compass from an auction and they sure got into their own little troubles but they ended up finally getting this compass and just so happened that this compass was actually a compass that the Knicks was supposed to get. So Hypnos was actually supposed to be getting this one. He actually bought it from the auction. And of course, later on, he found out it was missing. And of course, who has it? Siverin and his crew. Whew. Okay, so I had to stop myself for a little bit because I think I was saying a little bit too much and I want to get too, too far into the story. But just know, you guys, that after this, something happens to where Siverin kind of gets caught up <laughs> in his little... um a heist of a compass thing that they did he did receive a letter ended up getting tricked into going to hypnos house which of course he was the one who bought the compass and was actually finding for the person who stole it and when of course Siverin and enrique ended up showing up he knew for a fact they were the ones who stole it now it does explain a little bit more in there how he found out which i thought was really really genius but they ended up making kind of like a trade and they realized there's this relic or there's this thing that they really, really needed, which was called the Horus Eye. And Hypnos really, really wanted to get it. Now, you didn't know if he wanted to get it for some terrible things or did he wanted to do it to protect still the artifacts of the houses because that was mainly what their purpose were so that is where the thing kind of gets a little twisty or whatever but they ended up making a plan and they now go to this lavish party there's a big thing happening and that's where I'm saying like I really saw a lot of similarities of Harry Potter in this one because there was they had to go through this channel like this waterway and it was like the statue that had a three-headed dog. Who who had a three-headed dog, you guys? Um, that's what I'm saying. This is like a very boom, like beefed up high version of what Harry Potter would be, but without the wands. Like this was just hardcore, you guys. But like I said, if you guys can get through half of this and move it on further, then you guys would definitely enjoy this read. It got very, very exciting. And yeah, so I actually, I don't know. I actually enjoyed it, you guys. It did take me, I, I'm not gonna lie, for a moment I was like, okay, when is this gonna kind of pick up? Like, is this gonna go anywhere? What's happening? But I was like, I'm gonna continue to keep reading. And I'm glad I did because boy, oh boy, did it really get interesting. So I do wanna get the second book and kind of already start reading it because this was so good, you guys. All right, so that's actually the end of all my tbr i'm sorry i'm taking forever to do this video you guys i'm so sorry but last thing that i did want to talk about was the book that was actually supposed to be for the reading rush now i didn't know about this book until probably a few days after the fact that the whole reading rush started they didn't really promote it they didn't sit right with me the fact that they didn't really promote their book that they wanted especially during these times where here in the u.s we are seeing a lot of like <sighs> police brutality especially towards people of color there has been a lot of things that we're still struggling with so it's it's complicated you guys it's complicated but either way you guys so they didn't really promote it and i ended up finding out later um right before they even did the live and then i was like wait there was a book that they had that you know they were going to discuss like geez i i wish i would have known because i could have probably added this book to one of the challenges i did end up finding out that this live that they did they actually didn't actually read the book so they kind of just giggled and ah, you know i'm sorry like we didn't end up doing it you guys but if you guys read it good for you blah 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 blah, blah. that was it now the thing that really struck a lot of people um the wrong way is that why say that you're gonna have a book for the reading rush that they you they recommended and that they were going to discuss and talk and yet not prioritize it this is the book that should have been discussed which is right here i did end up actually buying this book after that live because i realized i was like no we need to give this author a chance i think that it would have been wonderful if they would have actually discussed it and actually full blown took this as like their main book to read and then everything else would be second if you know what I mean um, but it's called such a fun age by Kylie Reed now the one that I got um, at least the cover that I have is the one that was really for the Reese Witherspoon book club which I do have her on Instagram I do see a lot of the books that she does recommend and this was one of the books that she recommended early January February kind of thing and this book did come out in December of 2019 now this author she actually did do 
an actual interview with what's that guy's name I can't even think about it but I'll put his name somewhere here so if you guys go on YouTube and so you guys can definitely look for that interview it was a really great interview but this book actually had a really interesting storyline that I actually feel that some people can probably relate to and it's a lot about actually trust you guys I mean to be honest with you guys especially with a lot of things going on nowadays I feel like this is very important topic that really needs to be discussed which is discrimination and racism and all of that so I feel like this book is definitely a good time especially during this time which is crazy because you would think after all these years you know we would kind of evolve comprehend be more open-minded in our day and age but that just sadly isn't the way it is but either way you guys to talk about this book so I am going to actually read this book I want to take it upon myself as a participant of the reading rush and I really hope that you guys out there at home if you guys participated in the reading rush or even didn't but you guys are probably interested in this book definitely go and support this author I think she really really does deserve it I feel like it was kind of like almost a slap in her face you know like to really promote it she was probably waiting like oh my gosh they're gonna talk about my book and then it's like Boop. no they just laughed it off and just kind of went about their day and talked about other things so I, I kind of found that a little bit just heartbreaking you know so I want to give her her moments you know to shine so I'll probably come back here with a different video with my actual review for it so definitely watch out for that but this book you guys I do want to say that this does kind of entail the Chamberlain family now in this family you have Alex and her husband and they all decide to move from New York to Philadelphia as they ended up moving there they did end up getting a babysitter so they ended up hiring Amira and she came to babysit their three-year-old daughter I believe that was called Briar and while she was babysitting and one of the times Amira was going to go to the supermarket and Alex told her you know what can you please take my daughter with you Amira ended up taking her and while she's there at the supermarket the security guard there somehow thought that he can kind of just say hey you are kidnapping this child this and that now a lot of it could have been because Amira is a black person and that is I think where this kind of book is going at where she was kind of like racially profiled or discriminated against that kind of thing they ended up having this big old thing going on and during this time there was an individual who he was actually filming this whole ordeal like which is very pretty accurate to the times nowadays because when anything crazy happens like that especially here in the US I've been seeing it you get a lot of video footage you guys so I feel like this is very like perfect for the times so this individual was videotaping everything at the end of the day things got cleared up and yeah so Amira ends up being free and that whole thing kind of like really scared her it really kind of gave her a different perspective on her life and eventually Ale tried to get her back and said no you know what I'll pay you more I'll do this I'll do that and she came back to babysit the daughter but she wasn't like fully okay but then eventually she ends up talking to the person who actually had the video footage of the incident that is where things started to kind of change because Alex starts to get kind of involved in that and it gets I don't want to say too much but it starts to get very very complicated and the trust of Amira in regards just in general with Alex trying to rebuild that relationship up it just is is really really rough and that's pretty much what this book is actually about if you guys are interested in reading this particular book definitely go pick it up at your local library even at the local bookstore but yeah, so I'm definitely going to give it a try. I feel like it's very perfect for the times and I do want to give more black authors, you know, more of kind of a platform to you guys. So I just wanted to give you guys that information. I hope you guys actually enjoyed this video. What do you guys think about it? Comment down below any of these books that I actually read or probably recommended for you guys. Are you guys actually going to pick them up? Is it something you guys have read already? What are your thoughts? Definitely comment down below. Also, you guys, if you loved this video or liked it, don't forget to give this video a like. Also, subscribe if you want to see more content from me. And of course, click that notification bell if you want to get notified every time I upload. Until next time, you guys. Toodles!